body is the temple of the Lord. Do you all, where's that scripture found? It says, your body is the temple of the Lord. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 19. But don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, First Corinthians chapter six, verse 19. Whom you have received from God, we you are not your own, meaning we belong to him. Okay. So all that said and put aside, let me get to the point here. There's ten things that you need to use in your spiritual life that are found in verses 1 through 7. <clears throat> Reading it, it says... One of the wives of the uh, one of the wives of a disciple of the prophets, not a prophet, but a disciple of the prophet. The prophets up here, somebody down here, is who it's talking about. That's talking about you and I. I'm not up here. There's someone above me. And God's here, then there's a person here. And I'm, I'm a way down here. I am a disciple of the prophet called, they, her husband was a former disciple of a prophet called Elisha. Sir, my husband is dead. You know how my husband feared the Lord. Now a creditor has come and they want to take my two children uh, KJV says sons take my two sons uh, to pay the debt and Elisha says okay what, is, what do you want me to do about it Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, I have nothing in my house except one jar. I doesn't say one. It says a jar of olive oil. And Elisha, you know the story, told her, go out, borrow all of the vessels that you can and bring them to your house. Go to your neighbors, borrow, borrow, borrow. Bring them in to your house. Shut the door behind you and your children in the house. Shut the door. And then the oil you have here, start pouring and pour and pour and pour. When one is full, set it aside. Pour in another one. When it's full, set it aside. Pour in another one. It's full. Set it aside. That's a pretty awesome miracle. Just imagine. I take this, and I have a vessel, and I start pouring. And I pour and pour and pour and pour and pour and fill, 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 fill. Be pretty awesome. Uh, pretty awesome. And after she and when uh, so she left Elisha and she went and did all that. She closed the door and told the kids, "Bring them and bring them, and bring them." And the kids said, "There are no more." It stopped flowing. So she went. She told the man of God, and then that man of God. Elisha said what? Sell the oil, pay your debt, and what's left, keep for you and your children. Romans chapter 11 verse 36, 36 says, from, for, from him and through him and to him all 
things. Everything comes from Him, to Him, and for Him. And to Him be the glory forever. Amen. We're not finished. I ain't got number one yet. In 2 Kings chapter 4, uh, I read this and I, I pulled out about ten things. The first one is to know where to go for help. If I need help, I'm going to my wife first. She can't help me, I'll go to her mother and borrow money. I know where to go to get help. No, it's not to her and it's not to her mother. I go right over there or right over there. Normally I go over there. And I get on my knees before God. And I tell him what I need. And he takes care of it. It may not happen instantaneously, but he will take care of it. This woman knew where to go to get the help before the police or the debtors or whoever came and took her kids and hauled them off. You don't have to worry, Gina. No one's coming to get you. Except Jesus. You either, Paris. She knew all the great things that were connected with Elisha. Do you know the great things that are connected with God? The book's full of them. And we need to remind ourselves about them. We need to remind ourselves of the great things God has done. I get the feeling depressed. Well, there's not enough money to fix my car. I have to look back to 1969 or 70, probably 1970, the first part, January. I was, I was driving back and forth between Springfield, Missouri and Branson. We lived in uh, Forsyth, really. We lived there about 40 miles back and forth to work every day. I had an old 55 Chevy station wagon. I was driving home one day, a, a weekend, I think. It was a weekend. It's not payday. Every two weeks was payday. Driving home, my wheel in the back right started... Well, I knew I'm an expert, skilled mechanic back in those days for the old cars. And I knew it was a wheel bearing. And it was wobbling. I came home, I told my wife, I said, wait, hey, there's no money to fix it. We stayed home Saturday. Sunday morning, we had to get up, drive to church over those hills in Missouri. And about 15 miles. And as we drove... We arrived at church, we worshiped God, finished. I didn't tell anyone what I needed. I prayed about it. I'm sure she did also. We got in the car, we started home, driving home. The closer to home, the smoother it got. We arrived home, nothing. Monday morning, I got up. Drove to work 40 miles one way. It was fine. We drove that car, well, we stayed there, I think, uh, two years or a year, year and a half. And I drove it and no problems. Another time, that same car, we needed tires. I tell, tell no one. We drove to church. After church, a guy comes up to me and says, I noticed you needed tires here, the money. Go buy them. We did. You see, when I get 
discouraged and oh, I know what to do. Same as this woman knew what to do. Meet that man there. I need to grasp hold and say, God, you did this, this, this. Yeah, hey, God, just look here. Whoa, you made the waters go back. What I, what I need is a little. This is awesome. Thank you. And he revives me. Maybe not instantaneously. No. But God gives me strength. God gives me the strength. Because that woman knew where to go. For help, and she was desperate. She was desperate. First Peter. See, I've laid a stone in Zion, a chosen, precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. When you put your Trust in God. You will never, never never, never be ashamed of what He does. I put my trust in Jesus Christ because He is God and I see the great things that He's done in the past and I know He'll do it for me. And sometimes it's going to require me to fast and pray. Uh, and, you know, we really need to start doing this again, fasting and praying. You know where your help is. Then we need to do it. And that's to call upon him in prayer. Second thing. Do not look for help from others. Wow. It, you know, I could easily go over to my son and ask him for help if I needed help in something. But I prefer to allow God to do things. And he does it. He does it. I, Elisha told the woman, said, look in your own house. I, many times at night when I, I go in the bedroom ready to get in bed, I pull a Bible from the shelf. I have a small stand there. I pull it off. This was my, I have two really, my grandmother's Bible and my great-grandfather's Bible, who himself was a, a preacher, a Methodist, Methodist preacher. And I read. Now, my grandmother's Bible, I, it's really worse than my grandfather's. My grandfather, back in those days, I guess it was forbidden to write well. They had pencils. They didn't have pens. And, uh, but my grandmother's Bible, she wrote all over it, like I do. And I like, because when I go in there, I look at that, and I find the answer to what I need. Elisha told her, look in your house, okay? Um, I'm not going to pick on our guest tonight. <laughs> oh, pre okay, I'll, I'll pick on my friend. 
she's not a guest. Uh, in your house, where is your Bible laying right now? On your bed. Whoa. Well, she was fast. She knew. I hope you know where your Bible is. She has hers right there with her. <clears throat> and you have yours. You, you brought the real thing. Oh, he has two. This guy carries around two Bibles. The woman knew. She says, I have nothing in the house. I have just a little bit of oil. Well, perhaps your Bible is not used very much. I would call that a little bit of oil. But we have to find what is in the house. Because little, God looks at it, that's a lot. You and I look at it, it's just a little bit. God looked at the woman who gave uh, two pennies or whatever, two bites in the offering. He said she's given a lot. God looks at us. What do you have? And in Second Kings uh, chapter four, verse two, Elisha responds. He said, um, "How can I help you?" Uh, tell me, what do you have in your house? Oh, your servant has nothing there at all except a little oil. You know, I look and I see a need in the church here. I don't know if you notice any needs here? But every Sunday morning, I just, and that's kind of a, uh, that sign is, who I like it. I drool because we need a greeter at the door Tuesday night. Was anyone standing at the door when you came in to greet you? No one. I look and I see, well, maybe we need a uh, home group Bible study in another area of town or something. I, I look at this church and I say, you know, well, I, I can look back and I see our youth group for the deaf was awesome, big before. But now we don't have the leader. God, we need a leader. Well, where will we get the greeter? Where will we get the youth leader? What are we going to do? Who has the skills? But I'll tell you something. God has a plan. And to find his plan, I think we need to get back to where we found it years ago. And years ago, we got on our knees and we began to pray, Lord, pour out your spirit. Lord, send labors for the harvest. Every week we met. March, get ready. The month of March, we're going to have a prayer meeting once a week. We're going to begin to cry out to God. And I, I'll tell you, 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 need, you need to begin now to practice. Yeah, you can practice your prayers. Lord, heal this arthritis. He'll, he will do it. Mm. We have little oil. 
people on the surface, I don't have a skill. I did not have the skill to stand here and preach, but Holy Spirit comes inside of me and gives me enough wisdom and skill to tell you about what God wants you to know. Yeah. I'm not the educated, brilliant person that you think I am. Hmm. Some people seem to have nothing to offer, but you have a lot to offer if you'll search and find it. Yeah. What do you have? Number three. You have to find out what's in the house. Second Kings 4, 2. He asked her, and the woman said, I have nothing. Because the woman was focusing on the negatives. The, the woman was focusing on the things she did not have. I try to focus on what I have and what God has given to me. Uh, you know, when I first came here back in 1993 with the Deaf Church, I thought, um, you know, for us to reach the young deaf in the community, in the city, we needed a gym. A place for them to play and have fun. We needed a gym. But you know what? We didn't need that to reach the deaf in this city. We had 20 plus 20, 25 kids coming every Friday night. The only thing we needed was people who would give up their lives and their time to serve the Lord. You know, well, we don't have that now. Don't worry about that. What we have to focus on is what we do have in the house and begin to use it. Uh, I look at what we have, and this church is blessed. You know, uh, uh, people, I'm overwhelmed. Number four, yeah, don't worry about the negative. Look at the positive. I don't worry about my past and what happened with me. That's behind me. I look at the future and what God has planned for me. Um, it's, it's natural to be like this woman uh, in this story. But we need to show God, I have something to give. John 6, 9. When the crowd was there, and there was a, a boy here who hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what's that among so many? Well, I'm just one person. It's going to require a lot of people to do that job. Yeah. The disciples said, we have nothing. But they had the bread and the fish. How many breads? Five. Need to back up on you. Five breads. Uh, said, we don't even have enough money 
to pay a youth leader. We don't even have enough money to pay the pastor. Let me tell you something. Everything starts small. And if you just focus, 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 focus on that small, it'll stay small. God wants you to... No, I won't, I'm not say that. I was gonna. I was gonna talk about uh, having too much, uh, and you couldn't see very well. Uh, I, I don't have eyelashes, fake. But anyway, everything starts small. Faith is not faith until you do something uh, something action is required Elisha told the woman go get pots go get pots mm. lots of pots that required lots of action. So I'm telling you tonight what we need to do. We need to get lots of prayer. And that requires a lot of action. Was it... Uh, I, I get confused. I, I don't think it was me Sunday that said it, but maybe it's Sunday night. We cannot convince people to come forward and pray anymore in church. Not just this church. I'm not talking about this church. Because most churches have put it on hold. They just don't do it. That's why every Sunday for the last three weeks I've been doing things different. After the worship is over, we've been gathering together to pray for one another. We're starting to break down this I have nothing in my house or I do no action. God wants us to become people of action for Him. Now I know you're all hard workers. You you do... Uh, Fantastic. Next. Do not limit God's ability to provide. I put that one down because that's probably probably my uh, bad point. I might try to limit him to provide. At our business meeting last year, we had a financial situation really desperate. We made it through the year just fine. Right now, we're again in the same spot, and it doesn't just happen the same time every year. But since November, one person who gives almost $10,000 every year has stopped giving. Another person they didn't, those people don't come to church, just to let you know. But they have sent money, sent money, sent money. One person for over 20 years have been sending a check every month. They give over $4,000 every year. It's on hold. They stopped in November. I've heard nothing. I don't know. Well, you can imagine our church losing around $11,000 income for one year. That's a lot of money, or $12,000, really more than that, when you add it all up. What are we going to do? I'm not going to limit God's ability to provide. Because God showed me last November with our kids run for the fund. 
fun. Run for the fun. I, I assign it right. Run for the fun for camp. That other church visitors came in. They went back to their church and decided once a month we'll do that and the money we'll give to your church so our, our children and youth can go to camp. Awesome. That is a wow. Wow. You know, there's a lot of things I'd like to do. I'd like to have a fellowship. Linda's worse about this one than me. A fellowship hall that, that's big enough where we could sit down and enjoy comfortably. Well, where are we going to get the money to tear it down and to build another one? Pay attention now. Let me tell you something. God reveals himself to us depending according to your expectations or you have no expectations. God shows miracles if we expect it. I gotta hurry. This is worse than Linda Cruz preaching. Well, it's not as, yeah, it's really worse. I know hers is much better. Anyway, shut the door. The woman was told to go in and shut the door. Instead of listening to the skeptics, oh, it'll never happen. There's no way it's going to happen. I'm never going to get a job. You know, I'm never going to, uh, you know, I thought... Really, as an adult, after we were married, I never thought I would own a new car. I, I never, I, I, don't, I don't think I ever dreamed about it. My dream was to have a nice secondhand car. Since that time, since we've been married, we've, we've, purchased many new cars from the dealership. The miles, oh, five miles, that's all, you know. Instead of listening to the skeptics, I'm going to look to God instead. The woman and her sons, the family. Oh, I had it in my notes here. It says, March, we'll have a prayer meeting time. Hmm. Oh, I know about that now. We need, she shut the door. The world my business, what I'm going to do after church tonight, you know, what I'm going to do tomorrow, we push it aside for a few minutes of worship to God. We have to come together in prayer. That's what it means to shut the door. Shutting the door is getting yourself alone with God. Then I have to do something else. I have to pour. I have to pour out myself to you, Lord. Everything in me has to become empty. Saying, God, here I am. 
There's pots stacked all over the place. But they're not full yet. Lord, there's things in my life that are that need to be changed. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10. Now, he who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply increase supply and increase your store uh, your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness that's a scripture you need to read again and again and again getting ready to receive from God number nine after the miracle we have to move on after we see God do something awesome don't just dwell on it the woman said, Elisha, what do you do now? He said, hey, sell all you can. Take the money. Use it. And what oil is left, use it for yourself. We, we can get great things from God in prayer time. God telling us there's more that needs to be done in this church. Just to let you know, Sister Lorena, Lorena brought a box full of tracts last Sunday. We laid hands on them, didn't we? We prayed over them. We will stamp the vax with the name of the church hopefully this Friday group will come in and do that and then on Sunday morning early we're going to ask people to come early and go out to the community passing them out have them in Spanish and have them in English no Tagalog I spell it You see, it's time for you and I. Oh, that's not how you say it. Uh, anyway. Sorry, Hilda. Mabel, sorry. Let's go on to 10, the last one. Let me tell you something. There will always be enough. Elisha says, your sons and yourself can live on what you have left. What you have left, there's always enough. Faith requires the action. The word go is a verb. It's a verb with isn't it a verb? Yeah. I just had to check with the English teacher over here. Go is a word of action. It's a verb, and it's a word of action. And we have to, we as spiritually have to put some action to our desires. I've desired this, this, and this. But I've been slow to put action with it. That's changing. And I know, well, March, why not start it now? You can start your prayer time anytime. But as a corporate body, I'll be announcing Sunday, we will have a prayer time once a week during the month of March. And I know there may be conflicts. That's okay. Go ahead with what you already have scheduled. But when you can, it'll, it'll be at night. And I'm, I'm looking probably Thursday nights. 
possibly Friday, but more than likely Thursday night's prayer time for March. It's time to begin to act. Would you stand together? Next Tuesday night, this is the 13 and 7 you. Oh, May 14th and 7. Okay, it's two weeks. So next week, Pastor Linda will be back. All right? Lord, we thank you because you've blessed us. And Lord, you put in our minds and you put in our hearts to do something. To do something. We're not satisfied as we are. As a bird church, as a body, we want more. We, we wanted that, but we've been a little bit hesitant in putting off doing what we know will bring the results. So therefore, God, we're going out, we're going to collect the vessels, we're going to bring them in, and we're going to pray. And Lord, we shall see the miracles being poured out upon people. And Lord, I thank you for the testimony I heard before church of your spirit already being poured out. We thank you and we glorify you, God. Amen.